morning, Bella Vista. We're back with In with Flynn. And I have with me, as always, our mayor, John Flynn. It's great to be here. Yeah. Boy, you've got a lot of really great stuff to talk about today. Yeah. But you know what? Let's save the best, well, maybe not the best, but the most exciting stuff for the end, maybe? So we're going to talk about blue cream eventually. But in the meantime, you have a bunch of really great stuff that uh, people need to know about. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's a lot going on. I, uh, you know, we have an upcoming uh, city council work session on Monday, and I thought I'd mention some of the things going to be on that. Mm -hmm. That's on Monday, May 20. Uh, we're hiring two police officers starting July 1. This is all assuming council approves, of course. Yes. And uh, both of those are going to be for patrol. So they're wanting to buck up the patrol a little bit. And there's also going to be uh, two new Durangos for the police department, and that has to do with the officers for their uh, police vehicles. Uh, the fire department's doing a few things. They're buying five Hamilton ventilators for the ambulances. What is that? And that's about $90,000. That's for breathing, okay. you know, with okay. a patient. And, <laughs> Uh, they say they use those about 60 plus times a year Ooh. that they need those and of course they do about they do over 4,000 runs a year so My goodness. it's yeah they're pretty busy so uh, they have some now but they're older they're more than 10 years old so you know at times you need to replace the equipment make sure you have something that works mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. sure the citizens would appreciate that yes <laughs> absolutely <laughs> And then the fire department's also getting an air cascade system, and that's for filling their uh, breathing apparatus. And uh, in particular, you know, that's going to be used at the training center mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they'll be, you know, doing drills and whatnot. And, and that was a great event uh, the other day at the training tower. Yeah, the open house. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, uh, really interesting, I thought, you know, even a regular uh, fire station open house is a lot of interesting equipment and whatnot, but the training tower really was uh, on a different level, so to speak. There's a couple rooms in there where you can even have real fire. It's built in a way that it can withstand it. Ah, instead of the yeah. holograms. Yeah, so the fire uh, folks can, you know, can get used to being in a real fire and, and uh help them out when the real thing happens so did you climb all the way to the top of the tower yes i did i did too surprisingly <laughs> yeah uh, it was really interesting and i loved the the guys scaling up and down doing the demonstrations oh yeah repelling yeah, yeah yeah absolutely it's like most of those things you know you stand on the ground look up say oh that doesn't look so high and then when you climb up there you go wow this looks really high <laughs> exactly <laughs> but i believe technically it's four stories yeah yeah yeah. So. Okay. So that's coming up for city council. Yeah. Um, anything else that that uh, you think you'll be talking about? Uh, those are some of the main things with city council. I mean, there's always a few other uh, discussion items. Actually, in the work session, uh, Ferris DeBoard, the uh, chairman of Blue Crane, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. chief executive officer, I should say, he's coming to the work session in order to talk to council. Excellent. About things. So Excellent. I think they'll be looking forward to that. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the work session uh, is open to the public. No, yeah. in, no input from the public, but we can see you guys in action. Yeah, yeah. And it really, uh, you know, the work sessions actually are kind of interesting because there's more discussion. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to the council meeting, a lot of times it's already baked in the cake, so to speak. And you almost learn more watching a work session. Because well, it's a that. smaller, intimate setting. You guys are sitting around a table talking, and it's 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 easier to communicate, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so um, we have. Um, let, let's skip around a little bit. Well, let's talk about upcoming events. What's yeah, coming I up? just uh, mentioned a few. You know, there's so much this time of year. So I apologize to anybody I left out, but I thought I'd mention a few things. Uh, May 17 and 18, there's an arts and crafts show at Wishing Springs Gallery, mm -hmm. and that's Friday and Saturday. And uh, so that's coming up pretty quick. That's this Friday already. And May 22, of course, is the charity golf tournament in Bella Vista, the Bella Vista Foundation uh, and the POA put that on. And it's all you have to do is show up and play at any of the courses in Bella Vista that day, mm -hmm. and the money all goes to charity. And you're playing, you said. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, I'm going to, I always make a point of playing on that day. And they also have the charity auction. You know, a lot of people don't play golf, but they really enjoy that auction. And it starts on Wednesday, the 22nd, the mm -hmm. day they play, and goes till Saturday. So it's every day, and it's at Bella Vista Country Club. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fun. It always is. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me stop just a moment and, and thank the city of Bella Vista and the POA and the foundation uh, for supporting Bella Vista Community Television. We really couldn't do it without you. And we are excited this year, as we say every month, that you can now, we're helping the city by uh, broadcasting the city council meetings and the planning commission meetings. Yes. So yeah. we're grateful for that. It's good for the citizens, and it's it's just good for everybody. Yeah, the nice thing about it is it's streamed live, so you can watch it in mm -hmm. real time, mm -hmm. but it's also saved on there, so you can go on YouTube and watch it later on if you're busy or whatnot, and it's, you know, it's a good way to keep up to date with what's going on. You know, a lot of people, someone asked me the other day, how do I keep up with what's happening with Blue Crane and when things are going to be happening? And really, you almost get an earlier warning watching the Planning Commission. Yes. Because so many things come to them before the council. And usually anything substantial and like that in the construction side of things, you'd see it in the Planning Commission first. So. Well, and, and the job, one of the jobs of the Planning Commission, of course, is to hold the public hearings for the, so that the city council doesn't have to do that part. Yeah. We get all that background work done, and then anything that moves to the council for a vote um, is, uh, it, everything's in place. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, people don't realize that you can show up for the public hearing and get up and speak and mm -hmm. say whether you're for it or against it or what you think about it and, and make your voice heard. That's so it. People don't always think about that. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I interrupted you here. I think we've got some more uh, upcoming events. Yeah, um, uh, May 27 is Memorial Day. Of course, it's Monday, a uh, Monday, and at 11 a.m. they're having an event at uh, the Veterans Wall. And usually, I don't know the exact time, but in the afternoon, there's usually an event at the cemetery also. I'm, in fact, I'm sure there's going to be. Okay. Usually, it's in the early afternoon, you know, at the Bella Vista Cemetery on the west side. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. But that Veterans Wall, uh, they always have a featured speaker, and I'm going to speak briefly, and uh, it always gets a good, good crowd. It's such a beautiful setting there. And they finally have that parking lot. You know, that technically was Bentonville's parking lot, but they got that done recently. So uh -huh. it's been pretty torn up with construction lately. Yeah. So it's a little bit cleaned up now. So that should be a fun event. I thought, so. uh, didn't I see somewhere or read somewhere, too, they've got playground equipment out there? Is that Yeah, they had some new playground equipment there right along the trail mm -hmm. uh, close to the parking lot. So, yeah, that would be nice for people. Yeah, so. absolutely. And yep. then? Well, I also mentioned on June 11 is the day we have kind of the ribbon cutting, I guess, for Bella Vista in bloom. And uh, that goes, that's a yarn bombing that we do once a year. And it, it usually stays in place for a month. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the start of it on June 11. So I have a little ceremony for that. So You know, that's really um, a, an interesting concept because it's amazing what those ladies can make out of yarn. Yeah, I mean, there are yeah. bugs and there are flowers and there are trees and they're just beautiful designs. I, you know, I'm amazed every time I see those. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So fire station number one. Let's talk about where we are there. I, I see scaffolding. I see yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, there's quite a bit going on now. You know, that's where they're turning the old police uh uh, station in the living quarters for the fire department and fire station number one and it's both both floors mm -hmm. the lower floor would be sleeping at night and the upper floor be daytime living quarters and uh, it's uh, coming along really well we think it'll be done around August so they've been really busy over there a lot going on and, and that portion of the construction should be done around August you know, I feel like I'm really in the construction zone there because <laughs> on one side of my office, they're working on that. And then on the other side is Little Sugar Bridge. Yes. I can see out my window. Yeah, so, so how's that coming? 
Well, the last I heard from uh, their construction manager, they were thinking they'd be done in fall of 2024. Right. So uh, that'll be nice when that's done. People, you know, it's been torn up for quite a while, and I think people will really like that once it's completed. Now, they are, it's hard to tell, but it looks like they're putting in uh, another bridge on the other side, so there'll be like four lanes there? Uh, I, no, I don't think it's going to be four doing? lanes, but they may have a passing lane in, or a turning lane, I should say. Uh -huh. And uh, there is going to be a place for pedestrians and bikes, which there was oh, not before. Oh, of course. Before. That's probably yeah. what that extra bridge section yeah. is, is. So, yeah. yeah, they've got ways to go on that. But, boy, that's turned out to be a big job. It's, you know, they tore the old bridge down, built a new one, and it, yeah. it's been a big effort. So What, what maybe you don't know either, but uh, I'm curious, curious for sure. You know, as you go around the curve um, going west, uh, in front of the city uh, hall, and you're going around that curve, down there where all the workers are and everything, what are they going to do with that? Do you have any idea? Oh, down below, you yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're just making sure, I, I mean, I don't think it's going to be anywhere people would necessarily go, but I, they're making sure the drainage and everything is good. And of the, course, yeah. drainage. So, yeah, that's a big area. You know, there's always been a lot of flooding on, on the country club golf course yes. around there. Yes. So uh, they're making a big effort to make that as, as good as it can be. Okay. Um, Let's take a quick break, if you don't mind. Sure. Because we've got a really big topic or two coming up. Yeah. And I'd like to give it as much uh, space as, as we, because I have questions for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes, folks. Stay with us. Okay, well, welcome back. Uh, you're watching In With Flynn, and we are letting you know what all has happened over this last month. Uh, let's talk quickly about the STRs. And by the way, let's remind people, including me, what STRs are. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the short-term rentals. There I you just go. thought they'd mention that I'd mention that. Uh, we get reports every month, and uh, we now are showing 545 listings for short-term rentals in Bella Vista. A lot of people are surprised it's that many. We get that from Granigas. Uh, they look on the computer to figure that out. And there's been 417 permits, which means everybody who's supposed to get a permit hasn't gotten one yet. Uh -huh. And of interest to some would be that there's 383 permits toward the 600 cap. You know, we made a cap that you can't be more than 600, so we've still got a lot of room under the cap. Mm -hmm. And they're doing some enforcement work about the people who haven't signed up yet, so I think we'll get that straightened around. But it just shows you how vibrant our... Uh, community has been for visitors and, and whatnot, that, that there's so many of those, and a lot of them are full very often, you know, particularly in the spring through fall period. It's, uh, you know, very popular. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention was the housing in 2024. Yes, yes. Uh, I, we've been a little bit surprised by this. This is through April 30, and we have 178 permits. And last year at this time, we had 149. You know, we ended up with about 500 housing permits last year. You know, the interest rates went up. Yep. And it didn't slow things down as much as I thought. It went down just a little tiny bit. And now this year, it's kind of pumped up again. That's a 20% increase. And what was more surprising to us is uh, GEC permits, which are... Uh, grading and erosion control, which, uh -huh. which you get before you build the house. So this year, there's been 236 of those, and that's up from 132 last year in the same four-month period. So that's almost double. It's a 79% increase. That usually indicates houses are coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, the point is, I guess the economy here is very vibrant, and the housing, the real estate economy is very vibrant, really uh, strong. Yes. So, uh, 
it's it's not showing any signs of slowing down. And this is with rather high interest rates. It's almost like people have gotten used to the high interest rates. You know, some people probably think, well, if they come down later, I'll refinance or, you know, whatever. But uh, pretty surprising to me to have this kind of increase in the teeth of those rates, which have been higher than they've been for a number of years. Yes. Almost like people adjusted to it. Yes. But I hear other parts of the country, the real estate market in a lot of places is pretty dead. And so Northwest Arkansas isn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, but it really is very noticeable as far as, you know, what's happening. And that's before, all of that is before this announcement yes. by Blue Crane, which yes. I think will be a, a catalyst to the economy in general. So. Okay, so let's talk about Blue Crane. You know, were you, well, you've been working on it, I'm sure, behind the scenes, but uh, what's your overall thoughts about Blue Crane taking over the developer rights, in particular, for Cooper Communities and buying up a lot of land? Yeah, I think, well, you know, uh, the, first of all, Blue Crane, a lot of people might not know what that is. Mm -hmm. It's a subsidiary of Runway Group, mm -hmm. which is Tom and Stuart Walton are the chief uh, entrepreneurs, I guess I'd say, behind that. And Blue Crane focuses on the real estate side of things. And, and uh, they have several different uh, companies they work through. But, mm -hmm. but uh, I was told when they, f when they first told me they're working on this transaction that Blue Crane would be the people I'd be working with principally, in particular Ferris DeBoard, mm -hmm. who is the chief executive officer of Blue Crane. So that's who they are. Um, my overall thoughts about it, um, you know, I've watched what the Walton-related enterprises have done in Northwest Arkansas, and I always felt like uh, they were very responsible, cared very much about doing quality things, you know, cared about uh, what people want and uh, very careful about the environment. Mm -hmm. And in my conversations with them, they've made a big point that they want to work with us and, you know, not jam things down our throat and be a very collaborative type process. And I think they've had the same kind of discussions with the POA they have, through yes. Tom Judson. Mm -hmm. So I feel good about it from that point of view. Uh, that I, I just feel like, uh, you know, they're responsible. I, I think they, uh, you know, some people think, oh, it's a bottomless pit of money, and, and <laughs> it's really not. There's no such thing. I mean, they try, try to do things in a rational way, and, you know, they're trying to make money, but the difference between them is, is they're not. Some entrepreneurs are kind of, I'll do anything to make that last buck. And mm -hmm. they don't seem to feel that kind of pressure. They feel very much to want to do what's good for society and, and to have a positive relationship with Northwest Arkansas and, and with Bella Vista. So, uh, I, so I feel quite good about it from that point of view. That was a great meeting that they had, a meet and greet. And I, and I was at the Bella Vista Country Club last Friday on the 10th, I guess, of May. Mm -hmm. um, so many people, oh my goodness, showed up. Uh, but it was very positive. I heard a lot of really positive input, yeah. as did you. Yeah, you know, Blue Crane just did a press release on Thursday, the day before. Mm -hmm. And then they had the meet and greet on Friday. And uh, I had a sense it's going to be a larger crowd than other people thought it would be. But even I was surprised when people were just streaming in there. It was amazing. And, uh, yeah, I had a very positive feeling about it. You know, they, they uh, wanted to keep just the speeches short and have it more like a question and answer thing where they could talk to people. So uh, Tom Walton told me, uh, okay, just one minute, speak for one minute. And then right before I went on, he said, well, you can speak for more than a minute if you want. <laughs> well, I already had my speech ready, so I was going to speak a minute. <laughs> but again, I, I, have to, I have to tell you, I loved your little speech about how people are, how, what did you say? People are oh, I walking, said they were voting with their feet. Voting yeah. with their feet, walking Moving right here. in. That's yeah. it. Hey, so. um, uh, Tom was telling me the other day, uh, Tom Johnson was telling me the other day that the hat that Tom Walton had on, mm -hmm. 
You know, it was an old style Bella Vista village. That yeah. was actually his grandfather's hat. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, he was, he's just a very much a professional and, and he talked to people and, and uh, just made everybody feel really comfortable, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, when you uh, work with Blue Grain and Runway Group, uh, there's a, they have a lot of talented people on staff. I mean, it's not just one or two. Yes. Uh, folks, there, there's a lot of very impressive people, and we, well, you know, uh, the one person from the, from the POA board, Mike Abb, yes, who recently resigned uh, got due to a conflict or what he perceived felt. conflict, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, you've probably known him for quite a while. Mm -hmm. He's a really good guy, and but I've just met a lot of people from those organizations in the last few months, and they're they're all really high quality people, and you know, wanting to accomplish positive things. So uh, they're really pleasant to work with from that point of view. One other thing that I remember that Tom Walton mentioned, um, or, or one of them mentioned, might have been somebody else, but the fact that they also, out of this purchase, and we're going to talk in a minute what that purchase was, this mm -hmm. last one, but that, that also they took on the role of what Cooper had with the city of Bentonville, to fix Bella Vista Lake in that area. So uh, you get the feeling that perhaps that might be one of the, since they've already kind of started that, yeah. that that might be, uh, because that's, that's when you first come into Bella Vista from that side, that's the first thing people see and, and you know. So the cool thing they said that I heard, and I'm sure you did too, is there's a plan in place. They're not just going to come in and start doing things. Mm -hmm. They're working on a plan that should be ready by the end of the year on how and what steps they're going to take. Is that what you understood as well? Yeah, they have uh, a, a, a consulting firm working on a particular... Uh, Infrastructure? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, studying the whole thing. And they indicated it would take six months, which pretty much takes you to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're going to work in a very planful way. And, uh, uh, you know, things won't happen maybe as fast as some people might like, but it's going to be done in the right way. And that's a good point you made. They have taken an interest in Lake Bella Vista and getting that situation straightened around. But, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of different things that are... Uh, in the work, so to speak, I think people will uh, uh, be pleased about them. So let's let's help everybody understand what that uh, 2,700 acres was. Most of that is not even in Bella Vista. It's not in the POA. It's not in the city. It's across 49. Correct? Yeah. It's this. What they did is they really have had several transactions. You know, first they had the one that was in the news a few weeks ago where they uh, uh, bought Sugar Creek Shopping Center where and some Allen's surrounding, is, everybody. yeah, <laughs> and a little bit of surrounding land there. And uh, so they'd already done that. And the reason they had an announcement with this particular purchase, it was 2,700 acres. It's all pretty much west to 71. And uh, yeah, a lot of it is far west, um, up just west of I-49. Yeah. Yeah, up, up on the northerly section. And uh, so people focus kind of on the real estate. Well, where did they buy the real estate? And really probably the more significant thing, and the reason they had a special uh, get-together with this one, it was the uh, acquiring the developer rights. Exactly, because yeah. that, that is a whole other yeah. thing. Yeah, people have trouble understanding that. And, uh, you know, they're trying to explain it to people, and I, I actually gave him an idea. I said, it, you take all the original documents, and it's just as if you whited out Cooper and wrote in Blue Crane. In all yeah, the you're going to do a search for Cooper communities and an insert or replace <laughs> yeah. with Blue Crane. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that has significance, and it shows they're really committed to the project and to the area. But, uh, you know, they're almost viewing it as a an area, you know, they've worked so much in Bentonville and whatnot, and now they're thinking, hey, we need to get Bella Vista involved in this also. In particular, one thing I found interesting talking to them, we've had a lot of talk about 71 business. Yes. And 
before these transactions even occurred, they had bought, a lot of people know, they would bought land just west of 71 on the west side. Mm -hmm. You know, they bought quite a few of the stores up there on the hill and whatnot. And, and uh, in fact, before they did all this, they tore down some of those old homes on 71. They thought they might get some blowback about that, and most people were ecstatic. They, oh, I know. They, they were such an eyesore. Yeah. You drove in the Bella Vista. It was one of the first things you saw, and it didn't look very good, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, that land there on 71 it is significant, obviously, but... Uh, you know, the city, uh, different people have been looking and talking about 71 and, mm -hmm. and thinking about different things, possibly making it uh, more attractive and uh, more of a parkway look. Mm -hmm. You know, now that the freeway goes somewhere else, mm -hmm. kind of it doesn't have to be the freeway anymore. Yes. Freeway goes out on the west side now. That's it. So uh, I think a, a lot of people would find that appealing. And, uh, of course, it's still a thoroughfare. People need to get through on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think there's some things in the work maybe to make that more attractive. So. Well, and commercial, we, we, we've we always talked and know we've needed more businesses yeah. in Bella Vista, and, and maybe that 71 corridor would answer some of those things for uh, for the city, mm -hmm. and for the tax base, for yeah. uh, people to shop so they don't have to go to Bentonville. And, you know, another thing that I said that, that they said that was really, somebody asked them, mm -hmm. in essence, they were saying, hey, we don't want this to look like another Bentonville. Yeah. And somebody said, you know what, because of the terrain here, there's yeah. no way that could happen anyway. Yeah. And I think we have some very specific zoning laws, ordinances, and things like that here in Bella Vista that will control a lot of people's concerns. Because I don't know that they have, at least in the county of Benton, they don't necessarily have zoning requirements. So it's a whole different ballgame. And yeah. those folks have lived here their whole life. Mm -hmm. They're not com they're not coming in from the outside and and just doing something because it looks good on paper. Yeah. So I feel really good about it. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I think that. Yeah, one of the points they made to me was, you know, businesses in general don't uh, they don't want to go uh, uh, and build on some hill. You know, they like flat land. So they said Benton Bella Vista is never going to be like. Bentonville, yeah. just overrun with business. It's just the nature of it, you know. But there's a lot of things to look at, the study infrastructure-wise and whatnot. That mm -hmm. I'm sure that this six-month study has a lot to do with that kind of thing. And Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think we're about out of time for today. Is there anything else you can think of that you'd like to say to uh, Bella Vista before we sign off? Well, just uh, I think this is, I said at the meeting the other day, I think this is a real watershed moment for Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people will look back in the future and, and see that this was a big, big moment for the history of Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to uh, uh, change and grow in a way that uh, people like and is consistent with what people want. So I'm, yeah. I'm very interested in uh, keeping our nice, relaxed atmosphere and our good environment. Okay, well, once again, I think we have uh, updated uh, the city as much as we can for right now. Yeah. We'll invite them to the next city council meeting, which is actually, isn't it, because of Memorial Day, isn't it on a Tuesday rather yeah, than on a Monday? Yeah, it's on the 28th. Yeah, May 28th. So yeah. come on out. Come on out and watch the city in action and take part. Yeah. And uh, you can speak if you'd like. Yeah, they can get up. They can come to the meeting, get up, and give me compliments if they want. Compliment? Oh. Yeah, that would be all can, right. Can we say it has to be a No. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mayor. We appreciate you, and we're excited for Bella Vista and Bella Vista. We will see you next month. Come to the city council meeting and learn all about your city.